So our first speaker is Audrey Pantelis, who will be talking about intersectional identities. Um, we will then have Abed Ahmed, who will be supporting young people, uh, who will be talking about supporting young people and colleagues who stammer, a really important point. And then we will also have Nikki Bright, uh, who will be talking about goals for raising menopause awareness, an issue that affects a lot of people. Uh, we are slightly ahead of schedule, but we are going to just go over to Audrey. Audrey, good morning. <laughs> There's always one. I knew I was going to do that. I thought to myself, I won't be that person. I won't be that person. <laughs> Good morning. All no, right. And over to you, Audrey. Tell us. Fantastic. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning, Benny. And um, it's great to be with you this morning um, at the Diverse Educators Conference. So, this morning, I'm talking a little bit about intersectionality. And I'm going to be talking about the idea of it, the concept of it, which we know um, is, is probably coming more to the fore as we kind of delve deeper into the um, space of diversity, equity and inclusion. So where does it come from? The phrase itself comes from um, uh, an expression, a concept coined by Professor Kimberly Crenshaw back in 1989. And she was talking about it with regards to the concepts of um, sex, um, or gender um, and, and thinking very much about that with regards to race. Um, and if you like to kind of illustrate it a little bit more, the way in for me definitely has been um, the understanding that what might affect um, all um, females doesn't necessarily affect me as a black female. And so my lens has always been different and it's been something definitely that I felt um, throughout my adult life um, when I'm listening to concepts, when I'm listening to reports or theories being given about um, feminism. I'm, I'm loving it and I'm thinking this is great, but then I'm also thinking, but I've got a slightly different lens. It, it, it feels slightly different for me. And so the concept when it started, when Kimberly Crenshaw was talking about it, was to do with race and gender. Um, and she kind of gave, and I'm just going to quote um, from what she said, is when we put these two different concepts together, these two different protected characteristics together, systems of inequality based on maybe gender or race or ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, disability, class and other forms of discrimination intersect to create unique dynamics and effects. And I think that's the thing, isn't it? When we start to recognize that our lenses are all different, when we look at them in different ways, um, then we're thinking about the way in which we approach the world and the ways in which we, the support that we need to ensure that we are um, accessing the world um, in, in, in a fair and equitable way. So it's the idea that recognizes that humans hold myriad identities and that the overlap and the intersection um, is a thing, it's real, um, and it also means that because it makes us more complex, that we have to think about the different ways in which we can support, uh, encourage, and um, also acknowledge, you know, to a certain extent, the privilege that some of us um, will hold. Um, and it allows us to look at these different lenses. It allows us to examine while not feeling kind of beaten down or, or, or feeling um, in such a way that you, you're apologetic about those experiences that you may um, encounter. And of course, you can encounter these through um, work or obviously in your everyday life. So we don't think to ourselves okay then right oppression and domination happens in a nice neat thing so if you are black this is the only stuff that you're going to experience if you are um you know um transgender this is the stuff you're going to experience etc the reality is life is complex life is messy and it, and, it, and it does overlap um and so of course what we're trying not to do is to say my stuff is worse than your stuff we're not saying that oppression wise, you know, I want to win the prize because I feel more oppressed because I'm this, 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 this and this. It's not about that at all. It really isn't. It's more about the idea of um, recognising what they are, how they are and what we can do um, to be you know, cognizant of that and how we can adapt the way in which we either within our workplaces, especially in schools, we address that and we acknowledge that, um, and also the ways in which we can make sure that we can um, support one another. So it also sometimes makes you feel as if, gosh, there's so much, 
There's so much out there that actually, what do I do? How do I start to even address this? Um, because if it's not in your own lived experience, then how are you, how are you possibly going to know? Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a second, as the, the ways in which we can possibly uh, kind of start to do this as we think about um, the goals and the ways in which we can actually try to make sure that this happens. But what we've got to think about is recognising, as I say, those experiences. Um, and I think what we've got to also make sure that we don't do, as I say, is to pit, each, um, pit against one another. I also think one of the things that we have to think about in the intersectionality, because it started with race and gender, but actually we now use it for a number of, of, of um, the combination of um, protected characteristics. So it's about knowing that because it is so complex, knowing that it is actually going to be a challenge to recognize it when it's not necessarily your own lived experience, that we hear from the people um, that, that have um, those intersectional identities and that we recognise what we can do um, to support. So let's have a look. If we have a look at the slide, if Richard, you could put the slide up, please. Um, got a couple of um, suggestions, some things that we might want to think about, some strategies that we might want to um, make work. So you can see I've put them into some categories there for you. Um, and so if you are a teacher and you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't quite know what that might look like, um, you might want to start thinking about the idea of biases, thinking about the things that um, are known and thinking about the things in which you can challenge some of those biases, that, where you can actually think about the ways in which you can maybe set up a, maybe a weekly provocation, a question, and then get the conversation going. Because some people might not even know anything about um, intersectionality at all, but by doing that but through a question, you're starting that conversation, you're encouraging that viewpoint to start to happen. If you are a leader, for example, um, in any shape or form, middle leader, senior leader, you might want to start looking at your employees and actually looking to see who you have. Now, some people won't want to necessarily acknowledge or um, kind of bring to the front their identities, but um, you will be capturing data from different sources. So you've got that data already. You might want to just look at the data that you've got and start to um, address some of those intersectionalities that you might be able to see, or you might also want to kind of um, through surveys or setting up of employer um, resource groups actually in, you know, engender these groups to happen um, naturally. So this is a slow one in the fact that some people will want to talk about things, some people won't. So don't worry too much if you get a slow response. Um, it's about building up that culture. If you're a support member of staff, you might want to think about stereotypes. So again, similar to having a weekly question, it might simply be look around us, let's look around us and see um, where we can actually highlight those um, uh, um, and challenge those stereotypes. Um, so it might be within the school, it might be out of the school. And usually it's quite easy to look at um, the media and to identify where you can see intersectional identities been um, you know, um, seen and you know, being visual um, and recognizing that actually, you know, it's all fine. So, um, finding some famous people maybe um, who have got some clear protected characteristics that intersect and then talking about them. Um, and also, of course, looking from within the community. I think that's really important. Look to see what you've got within your own setting. And then for everyone, regardless of your position, it's about what you are doing, how you are approaching intersectionality. What behaviours are you seeing? Do you recognise that actually the viewpoint that a young black woman will have will be different to a young white woman or a young Asian woman? And how are you addressing it? Remember, we're not trying to pit people against one another. We're not trying to, you know, get into the oppression Olympics and say yours is worse than mine, etc. But what are you doing just to address that? So how do you ensure that you are inclusive? How do you ensure that the culture that you are creating within your school um, encourages safety, encourages people to, as I say, um, talk about their identities or possibly even people that might think to themselves, actually, you know what? I don't necessarily want to talk about it, but I want to feel OK about not talking about it but also recognising that um, when I'm ready to, I can. 
So these are some of the strategies that I'm suggesting that you might want to think about. And even just doing one, just doing the one will be amazing. It'll be absolutely amazing because what you are then doing is encouraging and enabling those people with those intersectional identities to feel safe enough to talk about some of their challenges, some of their um joys and also the ways in which they can be supported because not everybody wants to talk about um the support that they need but they do need that culture they do need to feel safe and so when we as we finish and come into land now when we're thinking about just one group remember then that's all you're seeing but we know that everyone is complex we know that everyone um has a, a, a myriad of, of of identities um that sometimes they want to reveal sometimes they don't so we want people to understand we want people to listen to understand and so let's encourage and let's set up um the culture that enables that to happen let's think about our behaviors that enables that um behavior that we want to see to be able to thrive. Thank you. Um, morning, my friend. It's lovely to see you and thank you for opening our event today. I was going to say a massive um, welcome as well to everyone who has joined us in the audience. We've got a very international um, audience today. We've got people in Kuala Lumpur, Baku, Oman, Cornwall, Norfolk, Suffolk. So thank you for joining us in the audience. And please do be interactive in the chat. Post comments and questions for the speakers and Benny and I can then share them. So whilst I wait for you to type some thoughts um, into the chat, um, thank you, Audrey, for unpacking intersectionality because it's one of those terms that gets bandied around quite a lot and people mm. aren't always completely clear what it means so I just want to do a little bit further probing so this idea of intersectionally data handling so thinking about how we look at data for the children in an intersectional way and how we could or should be looking at the data for the adults in the workforce in an intersectional way can you just tease that out a little bit further for the audience yeah no problem so it's interesting in schools especially we we do a lot don't we when we're looking at data with regards to progress we sometimes we say right okay then so how are boys is doing how are the girls doing etc and we we capture all of that um and then of course what we can start to do um with the data that we already have um is to start subdividing that so it may well be as already probably is the case we look at um uh you know black caribbean boys we look at you know black um african boys etc so we can start to subdivide that we can do that again we don't we tend to do it mostly interestingly with boys we don't do it so much with girls um, and maybe there's some some work to be done there um, in, in, in actually really un understanding that we do that with special educational needs, etc. So there's a lot of things that we already do where we can start to, you know, free school meals, English as an additional language, etc. So I think there are some different ways in which we can do the same things that we're doing, but we just think about the different categories and we think about the ways in which we, we can unpack that. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Like I wasn't saying hours, sorry, don't cut you off there. Spending hours as a classroom yeah. teacher, as a head of department, faculty leader, doing all that demographic data handling for my pupils, knowing who was attending, behaving, all those different absolutely. categories. And we do, I don't think people see that as being us being aware of the intersectional layers that people are experiencing how about the staff then what what what, what i think about today's theme of goals and and the educators on the call what would you like them to be doing differently with the staff around the data around the staff when it comes to intersectionality well this is it and i think this is the culture thing really and this is the bit that's probably you, you will have to you know tread carefully tread slowly but but it's that culture piece really so it's it's more to do with um if you uh, on the slide that i talked about with leaders about setting up groups and setting up the encouragement of of people being able to talk about how they um how they present i guess how that how, mm. how they are within their settings but the culture's got to be right mm. so sometimes you can see schools meaning really well and wanting to set something up by saying right we're gonna have this we're gonna have that and people are going i'm not getting involved in that because actually it's quite exposing it makes you see it's quite you know you're quite vulnerable so yeah. i think it's 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 probably start the same way for for schools start the same way as you do with um students and maybe um encourage in the first instance people if they want to set up a, a group 
employee resource groups to to start to kind of address those issues i'm just thinking about the adult data though and and about like from a hr point of view thinking about who we're recruiting who we're retaining who we're promoting that data can get really interesting can't it when we look at the fact that we're losing women from the sector but are we losing women who have got children or women who are women of color or women of faith like for me it's like that it's that drilling down to look at the story the data is actually telling us um that to me is the intersectional bit that I, i'd like the system to perhaps do a bit do a bit better would you agree I would. And I would also then think about the whole thing about recruitment and then progression within the within the um, industry, because, of course, um, you know, and, and as a black woman, black female, you know, former school leader, um, that that trajectory was not smooth at all. Now, it's not smooth for anyone. So don't, don't get me wrong. It's making out that everyone can just walk in and get jobs. Um, it's, it's tricky and it's meant to be tricky. We're doing an important job. But the reality is, it is difficult, more difficult for black um, female leaders, for um, women of colour um, in, in education to progress. Um, and, and we need to know why. Mm. We need to know why mm. that is, what's happening. So once you're in an organisation, what is actually happening for these particular um, you know, categories of, of, of staff that want to progress but are finding they're stopped and maybe um, at, at an expense of another um, mm. group? Definitely. And my final question, because it is Black History Month and we don't necessarily all condone that Black History Month is needs to be celebrated. We want to move beyond Black History Month, but a lot of schools will be yeah. marking it. What would your call to action be for the schools to think about this intersectionality of role models and contributions to be celebrating during Black History Month in particular? I think... Um you said the word celebrating i think and i think actually maybe you start in october and you just continue you mm. just continue it so um to a certain extent as i say i'm 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 always conflicted about black history month i love it um but i hate it <laughs> because I, I i always think to myself well in august it was black history mm. month <laughs> in september it it's, it happens all the time it's mm. it's living and it doesn't always have to be about deficit so i would say you you're celebrating and always celebrating from obviously the you know wider society, the world, etc. Globally, but then also celebrate who you have within your own community. That's the key point, isn't it? I've seen lots yeah. of tweets this week about that we need to stop um, celebrating black american contributions and actually look at black british contributions and then think about yeah. black gay contributions and, and black yeah. disabled contributions and and make sure that we're actually expanding the the visible role models we're actually presenting to our children during black history month as well you're, you're nodding away that's that's agreement <laughs> I certainly am, yeah it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a hot it's a hot topic for me yeah definitely and there's been some great programs actually the bbc have been putting on some great programs i think even on iplay now you can have black british and proud as a great so, as a documentary series i think a three or four parter talking all about the amazing black british contributions um uh, contrib um, black british actors and um artists that made fantastic contributions um you know don't want to denigrate our american friends of course amazing but you know what the talent's right here yeah. right here right indeed. now so, indeed yeah. audrey thank you for waking up early for us we do appreciate it thank okay. you for opening the event go and enjoy the sunshine and um, we'll speak thank to you me. soon thank you very much okay.